Nottingham, the Midlands. This is the base of a filmmaker who, for me, is one of the most fearlessly distinctive voices of modern British cinema. If you haven't heard of Shane Meadows, it's time you did. Today, Shane's invited me to come to Nottingham. We've spoken on the phone before, but I'm really looking forward to meeting him. I joined Shane and producer Mark Herbert at their local pub. Just be worried if I was the camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Shane Meadows began funding short films with his doll money before making his feature debut in the late 90s with the honest and affecting 24 7. Sharon, come here! Sort these bags! What are you shouting about now? Sort these bags! What do you think order bags are for? There's I don't know, Sharon. Tell me what order bags are for. Tell me about bags. His last film, Dead Man's Shoes, took him right back to his low budget roots to reinvent the revenge thriller genre. Now he's back with his fifth feature at the tender age of 34. This is England is a rites of passage story inspired by Shane's own experiences. It's set in 1983, an era of mass unemployment, the Falklands War and the rise of the National Front. But the film reminds us that skinhead culture wasn't always infected with racism. People forget that there is a whole wave of skinhead culture that has nothing to do with the right-wing element, that actually came out of multiculturalism, and your film addresses that. Yeah, and people seem to have forgotten, or maybe don't even know, that the, the whole nature of what skinhead was born out of, um, the white skinhead movement, was born out of white kids working with black kids in shipyards and, you know, around the docks or in factories, and starting to sort of coexist and go out together and go into each other's, uh, you know, parties and do's, and, and these white guys, basically working class, were going to blues parties and, and starting to listen to Trojan reggae that was coming over from Jamaica. Um, and, uh, and the whole thing was born out of a love of black music. The, the skinhead movement was the ultimate kind of like, well, you know, we're actually proud to be working class and anyone who's middle class can't wear these boots and can't wear these jeans and this work shirt and a pair of braces sure. and look like this. In the film, the young boy Sean gains acceptance from a crowd of skinheads having been bullied by other kids. So what's this? Who's picking on you, lad? Some lad at school. What's his name? Harvey. Harvey? <laughs> so the bloody girl's name is Harvey. Hello, I'm, I'm Harvey. I've come to give you a jit. Shane vividly recalls the moment he became part of a gang. Someone gave me a Ben Sherman that was too big and a Crombie that was too small, because the names were right, you know, and I had a pair of jeans that I rolled up that were too long anyway, but so I had, like, real big donuts for Rami Docks. <laughs> but because they were the right pieces, yeah. I was just accepted, you know. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, oh God. Yeah. What a transformation! And then all of a sudden you're in part of this gang, and it's not like they're going out looking for fights, but because people know you're part of that, they'd leave you alone, and you looked scary. And there was, yeah. you know, as a young boy who's being preyed on, like Sean is in the film, um, there was an appeal to that. And what this film tries to do is say, yeah, there might be an appeal to that, but if you keep running with people of that age and you keep dancing around the fire, at some point you'll get burned. The lead actor, Thomas Turgus, had never acted before and was found by a casting scout in Grimsby. Sean, come here. What? Come and sit down, I want to have a word with you. Why? And you have in the film the most fantastic kid. How did you find him? We'd seen quite a lot of kids and they were just... I think Shane always sort of knew that it was going to be something special to really carry this... Kids in just about every single scene. And, and there was this... Um, we saw a few kids and then Tomo came in, did an improvisation with, with Joe Hartley, who mm. plays synth. And it was just amazing. And Shane, you know, I think Shane... I, I could just tell from looking at Shane that that was it. It was a boy at school. He made a joke about Dad, so I hit him. Well, what did he say about Dad? I don't want to say it, Mum. It's disgusting. Sean, I want to know what he said about your Dad. I've been picked on three times today. Oh, because of my trousers. Lots of things that happen in the film yeah. actually were part of my life. In the film, as in Shane's real life, the gang is infiltrated by a more racist element and a new leader emerges. So we can stick our flag in the ground and say, yeah, this is England. And this is England, and this is England. I went along to a, a National Front meeting when I was 11 years old in someone's house, and it wasn't just a group of skinheads. The, the, the basic picture I was painted was 
we're going to go on the trains to, to Brighton, we're going to go to these coastal towns and we're going to stop people coming in on boats. We're going to, you know, and, and the actual truth it was, they'd go out in a car and find three of the smallest Asian lads they could find to have a fight with and, like, beat them up. And so it was like, well, actually, <laughs> you know, you're just bullies. They hated the fact that their food smelt different, you know, that, that, that they had their own religion and that, they, and that they actually hated the fact that they were actually really united, I think. They had a culture. Completely. Because the whole, I mean, it seems to me that the part of that, and I think this is reflected in the film, is it's people desperately looking for a culture which is theirs. And one of the things that causes the resentment of what they see as the immigrant is that, that they have a culture, yeah. they have a music tradition, they have a heritage, they have pride in their own, yeah. in their own yeah. history. And it's in that absence of pride that that sort of, you know, the right-wing thing flourishes. Yeah, completely. This is England has a strong educational message aimed at teenagers, but it's been given an 18 rating. Well, how do you feel about the fact that the British censors have given the film an 18 rating because yes. they, they said that they're not just reacting to the use of, you know, of, of, of aggressive language, yeah. but racially aggressive language? I mean, it's sort of... It, I feel quite shocked by it, really, because I think one of the things that we did every day, you know, and, and the actors were all so conscious about what they were saying, and Shane with Tomo would say, you know, this is why you're saying this, and this is why we want to do So it was really considered. For me, with the film, it was like I've, I've overachieved, really, to be honest. I've sort of overachieved by having one piece of violence and one piece of really acute verbal violence. I've managed to get an 18 certificate, whereas someone else can slay 100 or thousands of people in a film. Sure. And, uh, and I, I don't really get it because it is it's affecting, yeah. um, but I don't think it's anything that someone of 15 couldn't cope with. You ever want anyone to talk to? She wants to cry with, or just to have a hug, or punch the out of him, telling you I'll be there for you. I won't say me back on you. Promise you that. It's it's not like it's a film about the eighties that has no value. I think there's, you know, the impact of of those things. Yes, it's set there, and yes, it's that time. But I think people can look at it as much as it's about the Falklands, it's about Iraq, and as much as it's about England sure. in eighty three, it's about England in two thousand and seven. Well, those parallels. I mean, they are sort of powerfully made anyway by the title is this is England as opposed to this was England yeah. and you are invited to see in those two cultures similarities and in many ways it's perhaps easier to address the present by looking at something which is historically removed. Yeah. As you know, I, I really like This Is England. I think it's a really good piece of work. I think the thing that defines your cinema for me is that it's very honest, it's very uh, open about what it is and it, it, it's genuinely compassionate and I can't remember the last time I saw a film about characters like that that had that much compassion for them even in the midst of things which are really unpleasant and really difficult. So I think you've done a great job, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks a lot, Mark. Thank you. Congratulations. And Mark's with me now. So, you like that one then? I think it's his most confident movie to date and there's really good breaking news which is that some councils are overturning the 18 certificate which the film's been given by the BBFC. So individual councils are saying, no, we think it's a 15 certificate film. Individual councils making that decision, mm. it's, uh, it's very impressive. So this is England, out on 27th of April, but if you want to see the rest of Shane's films, then the Broadway cinema in Nottingham is currently running a whole Shane Meadows season until 22nd of April. Should be good. Fantastic.